The spectacle of World Time Attack Challenge brings some of the best cars and drivers down to Australia's Sydney Motorsport Park, resetting the benchmark year after year, cars going quicker and quicker. But as has become tradition now, the sun goes down and the action heats up with the best drifters on the planet bringing their cars down under to battle head to head around that famous section onto Sydney Motorsport Park's front straight. My name's Dave Carter. I'm joined here by head judge Dan Mackey and we're going to walk you through this new exciting format for the Garrett International Drifting Cup. Thanks, Dave, mate. I'm pumped to be here. We've got rid of qualifying for this. We've got a new format now. We're doing pools, so we've got eight pools. We've got four drivers. They get three battles each. They pump through that. The winner of each pool goes into the top eight, and then it's a traditional style battle format going through there. So you go top eight, semi-finals and finals. See who's the winner. With cars and drivers coming from all over the world, it's important that we make this fair and maximise track time for everyone. So it sounds like an exciting format to take on this judge section here. What are we looking for, Dan? Yeah, Dave, we're looking for a start line. We go through the chicane, push it out hard now, click the gears, hit the initiation zone, a quick initiation to, into an inner clip uh, as you switch back after that into an, another inner clip. Nice and fast, push it out to the outer zone, drive through the outer zone, lifting a wheel a little bit there as you get around to the inner zone, then push it right the way out to that outer clip before you cross the finish line. The drivers have really been pushing pace across that judge line. Let's catch up with them in the pits with Courtney. The event's uh, interesting, it's going to be good to see how this layout format works. Um, I think it's a good idea too, with the uh, international drivers coming, so everyone gets a good run. I think every single driver here is going to go all out. I've had a few conversations with the guys I'm up against, and yeah, there's no holding back, no way. I'm going to go as hard as I can. Um, I had surgery only seven weeks ago, and I've only just started walking last week, so it's my first time in the car in 12 weeks. Never driven this car before this weekend, so I'm going to give it everything, but be careful as well. Yeah, we're all in for this one. Um, been our first international competition that we've um, we've spent months and months of prep to make sure that we've given everything, thrown everything at the car. Um, we've been testing, and, and yeah, we feel we've got what it takes. Um, we're definitely going to put on a show. We're going to push hard. Um, I haven't had much practice left in the car, but. Uh, that doesn't mean anything, we're still going to push and the fight's on for sure. I'm actually going to be driving someone else's car and I'm going to be singing it. I intend to just go balls out. You say balls out on TV, right? Balls out. Yeah. Um, I've done a couple of laps in this car, the owner's given me full permission to absolutely send the crap out of it. Uh, that's what I intend to do. So in our pools, the drivers will be fighting for points. Two points for a win, one point for a draw, and zero for a loss. That will decide who goes through to the top eight. In pool A, we have Michael Prosnick, Anthony Billick, Josh Botcher, and Matt Russell. Pool B, Warwick Hill, Fanger Dan Woolhouse, Aaron Juar, and Adam Monk. Pool C, Jaron Olive Corona, Jack Shanahan, Ben Meir, and Brendan Greaves. And then pool D, Connor Shanahan, Luke Fink, Michael Bonney, and Stephen Bergmans. Pool E is going to see Nob Tanaguchi, Nathan Greenhill, Bo Yates, and Drift Zamurai himself. Pool F will be Dale Campaign, Jake Jones, Carl Thompson, and Cameron Moat. For Pool G, we've got Mitch Pullen, Danny Probert, Naoki Nakamura, and Joel Dimmick. Jace Brown, Matty Hill, Levi Clark, and Matt Harvey rounds out our pools in Pool H. So that's how we've split that full field of 32 and there is not a single easy battle for any of these drivers here. Fair way to divide them up, going through the pools in front of not only a large crowd following, but the DK himself, Keiichi Tsuchiya, and of course, Brendan Dunker, a D1 NZ veteran rounding out our judging team. Now we've got Anthony Billick finding his own judge line there off the side of the track as he tries to pursue the pros himself. Pros who? Michael Prosnick. So he is in the chase now, a very talented driver with many international wins under his belt and seems to be putting himself in good stead early on in pool A. Yeah, good lead there from Anthony, but unfortunately, mate, that error in the, first, in the chase run is going to cost him. That happens. Here's another battle. We've got Boccia up against Matty Russell, the love muscle in that little turbo SR86. One of the crowd favourites here, but Boccia as well putting down the right pedal Plenty of smoke out of that big power S15. Yeah, it seemed like Richard Botcher was just struggling here to get it all together. And you can see now as he, he doesn't get it quite right, he hasn't been in the car for a while and maybe just a little bit rusty early though. With that fast judge line through the first section, it can be hard to place the car where you need it to be. Here we see Botcher having another go at it behind Prosnick, but again, as he comes through that inside clip there, just seems to get a little bit lost where he's going for that judge line, straightening the wheels up a little bit while Pros 
blazes away for what is surely is that second victory. But look at the big understeer under, there from under, Botcher. Yeah. Josh just really didn't have, have it together. It was, I, I don't know what it was, but he just didn't seem to be able to get it nailed down in the, in the pool rounds. And it cost him dearly, you know. Plenty of battles out there, but if you get it wrong, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, great driver, but that is how these battles go. Now we get to see another pair of drivers go again. So we've seen both Billick and Matt Russell out there before, but not facing each other. Tidy lead run there from Billick, but hard to escape that fast little 8-6 of Matt Russell. Yeah, Matty Russell, I guess two underdogs, the battle of the underdogs here. And you can see Matty Russell was just on song right from the get-go. That's what he needed to do. Massive gap there. Matty Russell's going to get the win. It's just whether or not he gets enough to knock Proz off. With such a fast flowing layout, entry speed has a massive knock-on effect throughout the entirety of the course. And now as the weather turns and we get patchy conditions, an expert driver like Matty Russell just tripped up a little bit by the changes in traction as you're throwing the rear end of that car around. It can be very hard to determine the point at which it will grab and get forward traction again. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. These are some of the hardest conditions. These guys were out there sitting on the line when it started to rain. So they've got a full dry setup in these cars. Just the fact that they're able to do some sort of drifting is a testament to how good these guys are at drifting. But unfortunately for Matty Russell, looks like Proz is going to get the win here and go through to the top eight. It's a common misconception with drifting that, you know, rain would help. We're out here trying to slide where in reality, especially with the power that some of these cars are putting down, they're struggling for every bit of traction they can to get forward drive and to maintain the line. Although Josh in that NA V8 S15 seems to be doing really well and it could speak to the Botcher Racing Engines V8 under there having just that little bit of throttle response whereas some of these turbo guys will be having to fight that boost threshold as the power increases rapidly and takes with it the wheel speed which I think we may have just seen from Billick there. Yeah, Ant Billick just getting up close trying to jump on the door. It's all about getting proximity and getting on the door there and, and young Ant, you know, pushing hard trying to get out there and chase Josh down unfortunately getting a little bit too deep. And there we have our first round of results for the Garrett International Drifting Cup. Michael Prosnick taking out Paul A with some clean wins and unfortunately Matt Russell going home on the trail. Let's catch up with him in the pits. Matty, do you like driving in the wet? Not this car, it's not really set up very well for the wet. So, uh, no. <laughs> no, we don't need much elaboration there. Is that why we had a little incident with Pros? I wouldn't call it little, it's a pretty big mistake for me. Um, Spinning on my chase run first up gave Proz a pretty clear-cut win, I think, from there on in. So, just a passenger for the whole lot. Here we go into Pool B, Dave. And this time we've got Warwick Hill, who wasn't a starter to start up with. Got a wild card in after Brad Toohey had some engine issues, couldn't get going for the start of the round. Again, another guy with car issues was Carl Thompson's lending Fangadan Woolhouse his car to get through the first two rounds of this battle. From the sidelines, you wouldn't know that it was anyone other than Carl Thompson behind that wheel of the mean S15 there. Fanger Dan doing a fantastic job switching nice and aggressively, really using all the angle and power that that S15 has to offer. Speaking of another V8 powered S chassis, here we got two of them, S14s in fact. Aaron Juar out in front there up against that twin turbo beast. Yeah, Adam Monk all the way across from Western Australia. Turning up in the Newland machine to really, really throw it down. A little bit shallow in his chase back there. See if he can turn it around for the lead. When he's on the loud pedal, that thing is pumping clouds. But he does have the cloud maker behind him. Aaron Juar, known for his tight chase technique in one of the lightest S14s in the field. That we now see behind Warwick Hill there in that JZ-powered E46 BMW from Formus. Great set of cars here as well. Really Warwick mixing it up with the guys after being thrown in late. He's putting down some good, clean lead laps. Um, this one's a little bit messy though as the rain had just literally started to fall. The guy's really struggling here. Aaron managing to get it switched around. Warwick just dropping in there, but really, uh, as Sachia was saying, need to have a lot closer proximity through there. That proximity can be harder to find than you'd think though, with battles often decided right there at the entry point. You can see here Adam Monk coming in fast in the entry, allowing him to stick close. Although Fanger Dan seems to be pulling away through the midpoint and the car's bunching up again through the exit. Yeah, Fanger Dan, Dave, just adjusting really well. And as I say, that commentator's curse, he's got four wheels off that yellow line. That's gonna cost him and that's gonna mean that Adam Monk will get the win. It's so easy with that speed on the transition to just rock it off the outside of the track there, especially when that is where you're aiming for the rear wheels to go on that tough judge line, you guys, and specifically Suchia has played out. Bit of contact there as Warwick, I believe, throws himself into a spin first. 
Yeah, the judges were split on who spun first on that one, Dave. In the end, um, it ended up being an even, even result for the first battle. So it came down to the second one. As you can see again, this water playing havoc with these dry setups into cars. It's a hard one and you've got plenty of power under the bonnet. Add some turbos to there for some skillful throttle control and it can get difficult with wheel speed. Warwick Hill here trying to tip it in, not managing to keep it out on lock there while Adam Monk puts together a relatively clean lead run, but the judge is calling that one a draw. Fanger Dan now leading Aaron Juar out in his own Mustang again. Yeah, well, this has obviously moved across the next day when Fanger was able to get the car repaired, got it back out there, showed everyone this mad Mustang. This thing is insane. It's such a shame that he wasn't able to blaze it out there on the Saturday in the dry, but he had a good battle with Aaron either way. Vaughn Gittin Jr.'s ex-RTR Mustang there, coming down under to put it to the door of Aaron Juar. Seems to have superior traction in that Juar racing engines S14. Very, very lightweight car that seems to put all that naturally aspirated power to the ground, even in the wet conditions. Yeah, Dave, I'm not sure if you saw, saw there, but Fang and Dan actually dropping four wheels off, so that gave Aaron the win. The results now, you can see that that's going to be Aaron Duar wins the pool with a five-point gap over Adam Monk, Fang and Dan Woolhouse, and Warwick Hill rounding out the pool. Now to pool C, we've got Olive Krona up against Mr. Shanahan. Listen to that V12 S14 sing. You know what, Dave, I think we should just listen. That unique exhaust note coming courtesy of a Hartley Racing Engine's 1GZ Toyota 5 liter V12. And man, is it putting up a fight for that little turbo A86. Yeah, the Bald Rock Hotel machine really going hard as they can there. Connor Shanahan, uh, Jack's younger brother will be up a little bit later, but Jack just giving it everything in that. Benny Mir here leading Brendan Greaves. And look at the contact there. That BMW coming in hard onto the rear quarter of the S14. Looks like Greaves just couldn't quite pull up the grip and speed mid-track there, running into the back of Ben Mir, but that is the role of the chase car, needing to emulate and match the speed and line of the front driver. Yeah, great driving from both drivers there. You know, it could have been easy for one of them to spin, but they just kept on it, kept the battle going. You really pick the Kiwis out there, throwing their hands out the window, a couple of gang sides. Cheer, bro! Yeah. The boys absolutely loved it, talking to them down the pits. They had a great time. They're keen to come back again and show these cars off again. Two amazing vehicles. Jaren's car there, absolutely ripping against Benny Mir, who's been driving really well of late. It's funny to hear a naturally aspirated V8 to be down on cylinders in the field, but that 1GZ is just a beast to behold. We want to see more of these things in drifting. So if you're listening there, you got your speakers up, build one. Indeed, we'd love to see that thing do a full season over here in Australia. What Switching around again now, you've got Brendan Greaves chasing down Jack Shanahan. This guy's done so much in the world of drifting for such a young age. He's only just turned 18, um, really mixing it up with these guys. In a car that he's never driven before, he got here for this weekend. And just watching the way he throws it around, the fluidity, the way he can get up on people's doors, the oh, aggression. Look at that, though. Can chase. Having a little bit of a straight line there, but that's completely understandable following a slower car in a little A86. Those things can sometimes be hard to keep out there unless you are going full noise with full speed. This is the battle for the pool too, Dave. If Jaron wins this one, then he's definitely gonna get a sudden death battle. So if there's in case of a drawn pool, we go to sudden death to shake off, see who's going through to the top eight. Jaron pulling a pretty good gap there. Switch him around now and Jaron needs to be up on that door exactly where he is, Dave, to get the win. I don't think anybody's going to complain about seeing these two incredibly unique cars running again. But Jaron slaying it in the chase there, coming in tight, really feathering that big noise 1GZ V12 for the crowd's delight in the wet. While Brendan Greaves out in front seems to be settled on his line, not doing anything wrong, just outclassed in speed by Jaron. Yeah, Dave, well, that one's going to end up going to a sudden death later on in the evening. But for now, we've got the Bald Rock Hotel machine with Jack Shanahan at the wheel. Benny Mir chasing him down, and it's looking pretty slippery and messy out there as Benny goes around. That's very lucky for young Jack Shanahan there. If Ben hadn't have spun behind him, I think that would have been a messy lead run that could have hurt him from the judging. Seems a little bit messy in the chase there as well, and it's got me questioning, you know, all the popping of flames under this car, you know, a little turbo motor, maybe something's not quite right. It just doesn't seem to want to get up and go. 
while Ben Mir pulls away through the last part of the judge section. I think you're definitely right there, Dave. There was definitely some issues with that car, but let's go and see this sudden death. We've got Jaron right up on the door again, chasing Brendan down. He's got to make sure he makes it all here. There's no other chances. This Coming is in tight. Oh. And there's contact. He's shaking his head already as that car is sent into a spin and off into the infield. Judges ruling on those ones is if the hit doesn't affect the lead car's line, you can keep going. But Jaron throwing himself into a spin there, and that is unrecoverable as the car leaves the track surface. Yeah, that's exactly right, Dave. There's no way you can come back from that in a field like this. Jaron pretty much kissing goodbye his top eight battle, and there you can see the results were tied up at the top of Pool C with Brendan Greaves taking out the win. Let's go down and see Courtney in the pits. Okay, Brendan, so you've just taken the win after a rerun. How are you feeling? Pumped. Couldn't be happier, eh? The car's on fire. I'm driving good. I'm ready. Let's go. Smiles on dials down in the pits. Here we go into Pool D with Luke Fink chasing Connor Shanahan. Yeah, little Connor has been having an interesting weekend already. Uh, this is the second car he was over here now driving. Uh, Luke doing a pretty good job there of chasing him down. Now as we switch it around, Luke, a little bit messy. Connor coming in, diving up on that uh, B pillar there, Dave. He's trying to get right up into his door, but that big power of that V8 just driving away from the little 2 Joe. As much as we might have seen a few corrections early on from Luke Fink, the speed there was incredible, rocketing through the end of the track there. Into the next battle now, Michael Bonney is leading Steve Bergman, who's won himself a steer in Rob White's old V8-powered 350Z as part of a driver's search run by Shannon's Insurance. Michael Bonney putting up a tough battle for him, knowing that big power JZ. He's got a huge turbo, sniffer nitrous, whatever you want. It is a weapon of a car from Victoria, here to stretch its legs at Sydney Motorsport Park. Now, as we push out into the next battle, we see Steve back again against Luke Fink. Both Queenslanders, these guys, having a crack there, but Luke just walking away from him in that V8 S15 with the flashing lights on front, just a little bit of show. Yeah, Turbo LS is just a bushfire factory from the get-go, but you put someone like Luke Fink into an S chassis with what looks like a pretty well-set-up rear end at least in it, and you're sure to see some crazy battles. Here he is tucking in on Steve Bergman's. Almost going for the overtake there. Bit of a straighten up, but I'm sure the judges won't mind too much considering that proximity. Yeah, really up there. And you can see Paul Connor having a little bit of issues with this Valino tyres S13 there. Just not quite seeming to hook it up. Um, and with big Michael Bonney in the S15 chasing him down in that C&D thing, going to really be a challenge. Let's see how they go when they switch it around. See if Connor can get it up there on the door. He's notorious for just battling hard. You remember him right up against James Dean, I'm sure everyone's seen that, where he just got on the door and tapped away, and he's doing the same to Michael Bonney here. A killer chase technique is one thing, but with the messy lead run behind him as well, it's going to be hard for Connor Shanahan to fight his way forward, especially after the round of musical cars. Here he is in something else, Dan. Yeah, Dave, I think Connor's over here, the young 15-year-old, and he's going to try and drive every single car in Australia before the end of the weekend. Funny to see him in and out, unfortunately, due to a few mechanical issues. But we've got two guest drivers here. Steve Bergman's again in that Shannon's 350Z. Yeah, great to see the guys all trying to help out in the pits. The vibe down there was really unreal. Um, people lending cars from everywhere. The poor scrutineers were having a lot of time trying to keep up with it all. But, you know, the vibe in the drift pits was amazing. So it seemed like a bit of superior speed there from Bergman's may help him out. Now, here's a battle of some powerful cars, both running some serious boosts. Luke Fink managing to put down the power on that patchy surface, while Michael Bonney is a couple of steps behind there. He is chasing down, though, coming out through this sweeper. Yeah, Luke Fink, just a master in the rain. You know, he loves that low-grip environment. Um, DCA, his, his series is all about low-grip driving. You can see Luke just showing reason why he, he really fosters and likes that low grip. With the low grip out there, and he's able to get right up on people's doors, do what he needs to do to get the job done. Luke Fink going to win the pool there, take the top spot, and move on into the top eight. With half the battle pool decided in the Garrett International Drifting Cup, we're going to head to a short break before diving into the second half of the pools and the top eight. Welcome back to the Garrett International Drifting Cup as part of the legendary World Time Attack here at Sydney Motorsport Park. We've seen the first half of our battle tree decided 
in four pools. We're now going to head into the second half of these pools with Nathan Greenhill chasing the OG Drift Master himself. No one better, Nob Taniguchi in the competition debut of the HKS Drift Machine. What a machine it is, but let's not take anything away from Nathan Greenhill and his team. Leading out there in the battle, the boys and his team have put this car together in just five short weeks. Oh, he's pushing it a bit wide out there, Dave. But what a car, what an amazing thing to do. Turning around now in this pool of almost death, you could say you've got Bo Yates now. Whoa! Where is the Drift Samurai going? I don't think he's going to find much tarmac out there on his own trail. Samurai struggling to come to grips with Cliff Clayson's Garage 7 built FDRX7. He's an absolute monster, but you've got to bring everything you've got when you're coming up against Bo, the show, Yates, and that Toyota Genuine Parts 86. Fantastic car, great driver, and Samurai. Oh, don't bend it. Obviously not afraid to stand on the loud pedal in a borrowed car to try and get back on track in his lead run. Here we go now, Dave, with a battle of the eight sixes. You've got Yates chasing down Tanaguchi in the front there, and there is smoke everywhere. That was uncharacteristic of Bo to just head that little bit wide on his outside clip there, so he knows that everything is on the line here out in front of Tanaguchi. He steps on it, not quite filling that outside zone as much as the judges would have looked for. Taniguchi trying to reel it back in through the thick smoke stream of that Toyota Genuine Parts 86. Nathan Greenhill now having a crack at leading out the Drift Samurai. This guy's really enjoying being part of this and all these top level drifters. And Nathan just reasonably recent to the national stage, having a ball out there, Dave. That S15 changes direction so quickly. Must be a serious rear end under that car and obviously a fair whack of power. So Nathan Greenhill doing a great job here in the pool battles, but left behind there after a mistake with Zamorai out in front. And here we go, Dave, with the battle of the Japanese. We've got Zamorai chasing down hard on Tamaguchi in that amazing 86. The wet conditions are here now for these guys to deal with, and we're going to see... Oh, I don't think Tanaguchi was doing well in the dry, so this wet's going to hurt him, I think. I love seeing that guard exit exhaust out of the HKS car there. While Zamorai struggling a little bit, I heard from the pits before that this RX-7 just wasn't quite set up the way he would have liked, fiddling around with different front wheels to try and adjust the track. Lots of eye alignment work, as I like to call it, down in the pits. You know, string lining and using your eyes, basically, to try and get it right. But unfortunately, not able to get his hands on it in time. Now into another battle. We've got Greenhill chasing down Boyage. Lots of lock there. Doing the old wise fab save, I reckon. Probably not fast, but he's lucky he had the lock back there. Looks like the Toyota Genuine Parts 86 may have made contact there. Yeah, something coming dislodged from the back of Nathan Greenhill's car as now the entire bar decides it's going to part company with the car. And oh, he's got well wide there. That's two wheels off. Two wheels is too Whoa. many. Oh, dangerous the one there from Greenhill, cutting off the line of Bo Yates, nearly ending in an accident. But there is the confirmation. Nob Taniguchi getting the win in that round of pulls with Bo Yates only just knocked out. I'm here with Bo Yates, who has just taken out his battle against Nathan Greenhill, but it was a little bit touch and go out there in the wet, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, touch more than go, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we made contact with Nathan on the first turn, so uh, that was a little unexpected, but, I mean, as a chase car, it was an extremely difficult line to chase. A big upset there with one of Australia's top drifters, Bo Yates, on the trailer, unfortunately, after his pull. Here's another big battle here. We've got Dale Campaign leading... Jake Jones has just thrown himself into a spin there in the RBM3. Big power twin cam RB under the bonnet of that car. Dale Campaign, on the other hand, back-to-back -back DCA champion. Really, really strong driver. Whereas we've seen Jake, he's out there doing a fair few demos, but not as many comps. And maybe that experience is what's hurting him here in the pools. Here we go with Carl Thompson. Actually driving Carl Thompson's car in the Falcon Tire Speedflow S15. Absolute weapon, this thing, having a look at it in the pits. It's immaculate. Chasing him around, though, is the none other than Camo Moat. A great battle of this guy. Really going to stick it to anybody out there. We switch it around. Oh, a bit of an error from Carl. Lots of grip in that car, so if he doesn't quite get the flow, sometimes it grips him up and makes a mistake like we've just seen. Very aggressive drivers, the pair of them. Here we see Carl now up against Dale Campaign. Look at the entry there from Campaign out in front. Lots of lock, but almost too deep in there, losing his speed, having a straight line out there in those dry conditions. And 
really a messy lead there. So it's going to be on Thompson in the lead and campaign in the chase to see how this one's decided. Dal campaign definitely making some big statements in a massive international field. Speaking of international field here, we've got a couple of Aussies. We've got the Aussie camo mate, the guy that chases hard, sticking it up the door of Jake Jones out there, or at least trying to. Jake doing a really good job of stealing out the lead there and getting a gap. That RBM3 is very fast, and some of you may remember Jake Jones as the drift speed in that one via biggest, fastest Manji's down that front straight of Eastern Creek. So it's no wonder that he's familiar with this sweeper coming onto the straight. But Camo Mode seemed to have the superior speed there. Let's see if he can maintain that speed heading into the wet up against Dale Campaign. It's going to be a great battle, Dave, watching Cameron try and chase up on that door. He definitely needs to get closer if he's going to win this pool, that's for sure. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be the one that settles it. Dale doing an excellent job out there and just doesn't seem to have anyone that can bother him out there. Look at this chase as well. Just very delicate on the handbrake and footbrake. Knows that he's up against Camo Mode, who is a big name to take down, but doesn't want to get too eager. Dive in there and potentially make contact. So both these cars playing that delicate dance in the rain. Camo seems to be able to pull away when he puts the power down, but through that course, Dale was all over him. Now Jake Jones out in front. Leading Carl Thompson in that massive power S15. The V8 humming under there, usually building clouds of smoke, but it just in the rain, it's just a dance. Look at the, the control they've got to go. There's no wheel work on those cars. They're just balancing them on the throttle. We switch it around now. Time for Jake Jones to chase on down. Carl Thompson, a little bit of a correction there from Carl, and that could be the difference in this battle. A couple of sparks from the back end of Carl's car there, potentially handbrake or you know something else dragging there in the rear, but it doesn't seem to be affecting that car. Jake Jones, though, getting second position there with a draw with Camo Moat. Dal Campaign must be absolutely stoked to have secured himself a spot in the top eight against an international field. Let's hear from him with Courtney. So, Dale, are you happy to draw with a man like Camo Moat? Oh, definitely. He's been driving well. Um, yeah, been congrats to him as well, one each. So, I think that means we go through the top eight. So, I'm really happy. So, the shock works work really well in the wet. Got a bit of grip out of him. It's still very slippery out there. So, yeah, look forward to the top eight. Mitch Pullen leading Probert here in that X Drift XD Falcon with a big power barra under the bonnet. Looks like Mitch Pullen a little bit messy there. Out wide, clipping a cone out wide again onto the grass, bush bashing as a ute should. That Dave, was a... I was going to say that it's a ute, it should be out there, but he's unfortunately debated a tyre, so he's got to go back to the pits. No time, no five minute rule, so he doesn't get an opportunity to change around. He has to fall for that battle. Here's a man that I'd say probably half the crowd have come to see. Naoki Nakamura out here competing in the World Time Attack Garrett International Drifting Cup. If you ask anybody on the planet who's into drifting anywhere who is in their top five list of drivers, Naoki would, if not be in the top position, be somewhere within that top five. Fantastic driver, known for his driving at the local track of Mihan with Team Burst with that famous pink car up against Mitch Pullen. You know, it's an absolute honor for any of these drivers here to be out there driving with the master of chase and on-track antics, and also a big believer in the Australian brake job. Naoki chasing hard in that previous battle, and Joel Dimmick chasing a bit hard too as he backs it off the circuit there, allowing Danny Probert in that immaculate XD Falcon to take a good solid lead here as the rain starts to fall in the battle, and Probert's turned it round. Hard with that switch back there, very greasy patch, and when the rain is falling, that is the hardest point. You don't know if you're going to have that slippery track that you had previously or a bit of fast, grippy, wet track. It's, it's anyone's game when you get continuous rounds of rain. But Joel Dimmock seems to have gotten the hang of it here. Out behind Mitch Pullen in that Turbo LS Hilux Ute. Well, have you given him too much credit too early? He's all over the place, Joel Dimmock, and he's around. He's gone. Spun it round. Thought he had it. Pullen dropping. Two wheels out in the front. That's going to probably end up being a 0 0 day. Yeah, maybe keep both hands on the wheels, mate. Uh, you know, if you're, you're trying to show off to the crowd and then dropping a wheel and straight oh. through a Garrett barrel as well. Oh, maybe next time. Well, you know, Utes, they're probably not really designed for drifting, and I'm looking at Mitch Pullen's one there. While it's amazing, it's got apparently a thousand horsepower, that thing, it would be a handful in the wind. There is a way to design them for drifting, though. Hashtag engineer to slide. Anyway, we'd love to see that Gaddy and Nigel. 
Uh, we have Naoki Nakamura again demonstrating his chase technique and one for all you at home who might not be familiar with him. Watch the skill of this man as he chases drivers, not in the line that he wants to take, but in the line that they want to take. And that is a true divider of strong chase technique. Yeah, absolutely. And even here, he's still managing to lead his battle. And if you, the keen viewers at home will note that he's got a de-beated front right-hand tire on that. Look at it go. He's still managing to drift. That is just all class. So quite obviously there, we have Naoki Nakamura getting through into the top eight battles. Joel Dimmick behind him getting knocked out and Danny Probat and Mitch Pullen both on the trailer there. Diving into the pool, H. Final round of battles here, Dave. And we've got Jace Brown from New Zealand leading out Matty Hill, who might be from New Zealand as well. Australian-born Matty Hill. Doesn't drive a lot in Australia. He's over there campaigning in New Zealand as he heads well oh. south of circuit there. Might have forgotten what Sydney Motorsport Park looks like as he's all over the track here in his lead run as well. That Formus S15, though, a mean-looking machine. Yeah, the ex camo moat built machine. They're always a work of art, those things that camo moat puts out. Jace Brown knows he's got the win in this first one. Baking those tyres with that big V8. Speaking of big V8s, Levi Clark out here in the Xzeti S15. So you might remember this car as the black and gold machine, but he has given it a quick rewrap for this event. Oh, and and Matty man, Harvey looking good. chasing right up on his door there, right in there. Guy out of Tasmania. We managed to get someone from every state and territory of the of the whole big land of Australia here to this event. And you see Matty Harvey really, really putting on a show. Levi Clark chasing up on his door there. But I think Matty Harvey's probably going to get the win here. Yeah, Matt's reputation for Siege was I've heard a lot about that guy from down in New Zealand. And personally, a man on small wheels is after my own heart. Great looking car, mate. Yeah, an excellent looking car. Speaking of good looking cars, you've got to love that 07 Frankenstein machine. Leading out Levi Clark. And that could be just about the end of our smoke for the weekend, Dave. As we see the rain absolutely buckling down on the boys. And Jace Brown is all over the place in the back there. Hey, don't challenge a Turbo LS to see if it'll put out some smoke, because I know Levi's going to try it. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Levi's always won for it. If we see Matty Hill now leading Matt Harvey, the battle of the match, that's always a confusing one for me, at least, if not for all the commentators out there. I'm really enjoying Matt Harvey's style, though. You know, he comes out very snappy, very aggressive on his transitions, and just reeling in that lead car of Matt Hill there. Seemed to be a bit of a speed difference to start with. Matt Hill in the Formance S15 seems to have superior speed here all over the back of Matt Harvey. Even bettering his one there through the outside flip. But unfortunately, looks like he's going to head a bit wide. Oh, just keeps the wheels on the surface. Good driving from both cars. Jace Brown now without the rear wing leading out Matt Harvey. He's got that green lights in the Frankenstein machine glowing bright and unfortunately not a lot of tire smoke in the wet weather, but running a pretty good line there. Matty Harvey though, look at that, look at that sucking right up on his door, a little tap. Both drivers keep going, amazing car control in the wet and slippy conditions. That's one thing I'm loving trickling out in competition motorsport is having that brake light on top of the windscreen. So you can see, especially from the chase cars, like Matt Harvey when he's tucking in that little dub bit of foot brake there and managed to pull the car up. So keep an eye out for that at the top of the windscreens on these cars. Here we've got Matty Hill leading out Levi Clark. Both in the S15s looking a little bit worse for wear. There's been some touches and some damage through this going through. We've got the 2JZ leading and disappearing on the big turbo V8 at the moment. There's the difficulty watching Matt Hill, as he steps on it, you can see this car's got incredible grip. So as the track starts to dry up, what do you do in a battle? Do you tip it in hard and just hope the grip's there? Or do you go a little bit conservative and maybe end up with a straight line? There's something almost like a team burst move with the drivers switching positions through this battle. And Levi's like, hey, mate, that's my lead position. Bit of a tap. So that rounds out our Pool H battles and the pools in total. Levi Clark taking the win there. Jace Brown, Matty Harvey and Matty Hill finishing out that pool. Now with the pools decided, we're back into a more traditional style of drift battle tree. We'll see Michael Prosnick up against Aaron Juar, Brendan Greaves against Luke Fink, Nob Taniguchi against Dale Campaign and Naoki Nakamura up against Levi Clark. So these drivers will go through, decide who's going to be in the final, but that will be on the other side of a short break. Don't go anywhere as the action heats up in the Garrett International Drifting Cup. Welcome back to the Garrett International Drifting Cup in conjunction with the legendary World Time Attack at Sydney Motorsport Park. 
We've got some of the best drifters and cars from all over the world, whittled down to the top eight by a creative battle pool layout. But here we have two best mates up against each other. Michael Prosnick leading Aaron Juar for the first of our top eight battles in the pouring rain. It is absolutely coming down there at Sydney Motorsport Park. Unfortunately, Aaron Duar finding that the limited grip out there just a little bit too much. Proz is managing to keep it all together, just working his way around. You can see that rev limit flashing away in that cabin. Honorable mention to Michael Prosnick, though, on the transition there, absolutely out on lock stops. Very impressive. Aaron Duar trying to match the angle he saw from his boy Proz out in front, but unfortunately unable to reel back that lightweight Duar performance engines. S14. Switching it around now, I'm really interested to see if Proz is going to do like he normally does and stick it right up on the door. And on the entry, he is right there, switching it back now, closing back up that gap, and Proz is just eating up that space. Look, a little tap there from Dabs. Both of these cars incredibly lightweight, naturally aspirated, both of them with dual performance engines under the bonnet. Naturally aspirated V8s just making a noise, singing away, dancing in that wet weather there. It's great to see two mates up against each other. Obviously, massive confidence between the two. And for Prosnick to chase that close in a battle against his mate, I can only hope to see what will happen later on as one of these drivers go through. Some amazing car control from those two boys as we switch it over now to see how Dale Campaign's going to go up against Norb Tanaguchi in that immaculate HKS 86. They pull away through the chicane. Not as exciting as it is in the dry, but it's certainly going to get out there. And Dale throwing it right up there early onto the door. He's not scared. He doesn't seem to have any body that he's worried about out there so far. Wouldn't it be amazing if he could knock this car out? Oh, an error there from Nob. That could be what Dale needs to open the door and give him a window big straight line there as both of these drivers battle the change in grip conditions on that wet track surface at Sydney Motorsport Park. Looks like Nob might have just got a little bit unsettled there going to the outside. You know, ready to get back on the power. It almost sounded like he missed the gear. It did a big rev, but who am I to tell Nob Tanaguchi how to drive, right? And he was obviously giving it a go, going wide there. Something may have happened in the car. Switching them around now, we're going to see Dale Campaign take out the lead. This will be interesting to see if Nob can close up, maybe maybe come overcome that gap from the error earlier. Running away from the start line now, we're looking for them to hit that initiation point and move to that inner clip. Out there in the initiation, they're pushing back in. A fair way off that inner clip is Dale. Comes I, back in late. I love to see a good Scando, even in the wet. Dale Campaign doing the big weight transfer there. Tipping it into the corner. Nob is with him, but again, straight lining through that center section, Just struggling with the big grip of that 8.6. Absolutely fighting with the grip of it there as he's going to go out, drop one, uh, two wheels now, so that's going to be a zero for Nob. Dale Campaign will take the win and move on to the top four as we watch the speed flow action replay here of Nob just running out, dropping those two wheels off. The judges didn't miss it, they saw all of that, and that's going to be the end of him. It's a hard one there, come all that way with not one but two cars specifically shipped here from HKS. Serious cars. Anyway, moving on now, Brendan Greaves will be leading, I believe, Luke Fink. Hard to tell with him that close. Yeah, Luke him. really sucking up on him there right from the get-go. Again, Luke just loving these low grip conditions, happy to get in there right on people's doors. As he's, did he touch him then? I'm sure he's definitely close though. Taking the grass line through the middle there. Very easy to get lost in the spray of water. I don't know what's more dangerous to see through smoke or water. But either way, Luke Fink putting in an aggressive chase there on the speed flow action replay. We can see Brendan going that little bit wide, trying to get into that outside zone, but not quite as far as the judges would want. Luke trying to work out whether he goes wide with Brendan or stays in, but ending up on the inside ripple strip there. Either way, very nicely separated chase run, and it's all on Luke in the lead. Yeah, Luke's going to lead this out now through the chicane. He'll accelerate up there as best he can with little grip. Brendan Greaves, though, doing a pretty good job of staying with him. Big flick from Luke, big angle early. That's what we asked for in driver's briefing was to get that angle on early. Brendan just struggling a little bit behind, and Luke may do enough here to overcome that error early. He's got right out to that zone, filled it well. Brendan shallow. Luke just hitting everything as Brendan's made the exact same mistake as Luke. So more mistakes from Brendan Greaves in this. Luke Fink is going to take this win and go on into the top four.
that big sweeper is a lot more treacherous than people give it credit for because it, it only starts tightening later in the piece. So it's easy to think, yeah, I'm in a sweeper, and you get yourself into a drift and settled. But you'll see Brendan here, he's out there and he's got the car settled, but bang, you know, there's not enough corner there yet. You are still on a relatively straight section of track, easy to get sucked to the inside of the track and out onto the grass. Yeah, that being shown very well there. And it turns out it's gone exactly the opposite to what I thought and was an OMT. Uh, so these guys are going to go around again one more time, send them out straight away. The good thing about wet weather, Dave, is you don't need to change tyres between battles, Ooh. so you can literally send them straight back out there. Luke knows he made some errors. He's fixed them up now, got right up on the door. Even a little touch and kudos there to Brennan Greaves for not having a spin. Yeah, difficult drive for both of these guys. Traction is low, but Luke tucking in so nicely on the door of Brendan Greaves there. As they both come through to the sweeper, both of them have learned to stay wide here and avoid that inside of the track. Now the positions will be switched. We've got Luke Fink leading Brendan Greaves. Let's see if he snaps that big entry again. Slight weight transfer and a bang out towards lock stops there. Brendan Greaves just a step behind. Will he tuck in here? Now watch here, Dave, as they switch it around. Make sure Luke doesn't run two wheels over the yellow line. Rails one of the white one of the front wheels. The rules are for that. Oh, and oh. Brendan's gone. As I was saying there, and we're probably going to see a little bit of it in the speed flow action replay in a minute, but the rules are on that outer zone. You're allowed to run your two rear wheels past the yellow line, but you can't take your front wheels past there. One wheel is of your front wheels is classed as one wheel off. Both wheels is a 10-0. Gotcha. Uh, so basically you're looking to run your front wheels along that yellow line to fill that outside clipping zone as much as you can but not leave the track surface. That's exactly right, Dave. That's the important bit is to get the wheels out there to that edge. Like Luke's been pretty good at doing, although he did get one wheel off, would have had a deduction. Unfortunately for Brendan, he got it all wrong and turned it around the wrong way. So really that outside zone, you can only fill completely if you're practically at 90 degrees of lock. Because if you, if the straighter you are, the less depth your rear wheels are going to get into that outside zone and you can't cross your front wheels over the yellows. That's exactly right. But let's have a look now at this battle here as we've got Naoki chasing hard on Levi Clark. He's getting right up in the door in a true Naoki fashion. Hard in there, even getting wheels and sparks up as he uses every last bit of track, including the ripple strip, to stay right on Levi's door. What a chase run. That's how you do it in the wet. Loves an overtake, old Naoki Nakamura. He will not wait around for a slower car. Levi Clark out in front there, trying to put down all the power of that big, strong Turbo LS in the Exedi S15. The positions will be switched now. Let's see Naoki flex his speed. It's all up to Levi now to show that Australians can chase just as hard as the Japanese can as they flick it out and enter in early. Nice line there from Noki. Look at him right down on that clip. He knows where he's going. He's got such control on this car. And Levi's gone. He's spun it around. Not going to be able to chase hard from there, Levi. Noki's just got to finish this run to take the 10-0 advantage um, and go through and into our top four. That's an unfortunate result for Levi Clark. He came in so strong early on in that chase. Nice big entry there. You can see he's frustrated on the brake, possibly hurting the brakes a little bit there. But he tipped it in so hard against Naoki and then just found himself stuck in this perpetual understeer moment. And when those front wheels finally gripped, that's what rocketed him off the outside of the track and into a spin. So there we'll see. Dale Campaign will be facing off against Naoki Nakamura and Luke Fink against Michael Prosnick in our TTI Gearboxes Top 4. This is going to be action-packed and anyone can take it. You have just defeated one of the OGs of Drift, Nob Tanaguchi. How do you feel? Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, that was an awesome run. I think he had a few strains in front of me. I held out a pretty solid lead run. So just going to say a massive thanks to Drift Challenge Australia, Luke Fink, Tiana Fink. Um, they've done massive things to get us here. It's awesome. I oh, can't be happier. Luke Fink looking confident in the seat. Up against Michael Prosing. Now, both of these guys have some serious international wins under their belt doing King of Asia over into the UK, into Europe as well. Both of them very talented drivers on an international scale. So it's good to see them both battling it out on home turf. Yeah, Luke being over there, he's done IDC. He's done some of the BDC. He's been around. So that both the boys have been out and about in the international scene. Homegrown Aussies here, putting on a show as Luke Fink closes right up on Prozzi's door, limiter bashing it all the way down the straight again, just for fun. How is that tap from Luke Fink in the chase there? Proz putting down a killer lead line, but it's on the switchback through this middle section here. Luke just dives in and you can see him a little bit more. 
little bit more, little bit more, and then eventually he just gives that little hurry up tap along the back of Proz there, but light enough that he didn't change the lead car's line, and that's exactly how the judges want to see you giving a hurry up. Right there. What a way to start the TTI Top 4, Dave. That was a cracking battle. Luke Fink all over Michael Prosnick, getting the win and going through. It's going to be interesting to see Fink out in the lead now. Proz is not one to be left behind. He's one of our faster drivers in this round. Proz is doing everything he needs to. Right up there behind Fink, giving him a little tap and a hurry up as well. Probably a little bit too much upsetting that lead car's line, which is a bit of a no-no as far as we're concerned in the judging box. Another tap from Proz, really, really knowing that he's got to do something pretty special there to get the win. Unfortunately, just a bit of a messy chase there from Proz. You can see they both come in together and fast here, snapping into that entry at the same time. And I think this is where it all started to unravel for Michael Proz. He came in trying to switch back early and tuck in behind Luke Fink, who went for a bit of a later transition. And that's just thrown out Proz's rhythm for the whole thing here. He's tucked in tight as Luke Fink dabs a bit of foot brake to settle himself there for the sweeper. Proz just running out of room, running into the rear quarter there. A little bit of Luke Fink, but what a tight chase. These guys really doing justice to the TT Industries top four here in the Speed Flow Action Replay. Let's have a look at the other side. We've got Valino tyre sponsored Naoki Nakamura up against Dale Campaign in the GH haulage machine all the way from South Oz. They head off down the straight, kicking it in there. Naoki on a much more improved line as he comes through behind in the chase position. Has to slow it down a little bit, flicks it back, but he's on that door already. This was a battle I was excited to see for Nakamura, but I have to say throughout the battle tree, I've just become a big Dale Campaign fanboy. He has driven so well through here. It's interesting to see Naoki's chase technique come out behind a car where he can really use his speed. Yeah, great chase technique from Naoki. Always all over the door there. Pushing hard on Dale Campaign. Little taps, just a little tap to let him know that he's here there as you see him come through this last bit. Tap, tap, tap using all the track just touching him there pushing right up on that door and look at that there is no space between those two that's what it's all about and we've mentioned a few times tonight as long as the chase car does not affect the line of the lead car we are all good in the judges eyes so love taps and hurry up taps are fine it's when you actually plow into someone and move them out of your way that it's considered a loss and Naoki taking all of that opportunity there and getting right on campaign's door we switch it around now we've got dale campaign chasing hard he's got to get up on that door and he needs to be there now he's i'm not sure this up. is enough dave he's pushing hard but can he catch up on naoki naoki almost walking away from him there where is he getting this grip from in that wet conditions very very nice drive there and i know he's a big believer in you know stock arms and and fiddling around with purely cut and shut knuckles and that sort of stuff so i'd say Naoki's car, not as crazy underneath as some of you might think. A lot of that is skill and setup. Not only that, Dave, Naoki's been really working on the setup of this car over back home in Japan before it went into the container. He's taking this really seriously. Not that any of our drivers aren't, but he's really working into making this a, a serious campaign. He wants that trophy, wants to win the ID Cup. Let's head back down to the Valino Hot Pits and see what the story is there. You guys, it was really great to watch. You can see you've got a lot of trust in each other. Absolutely. Last year, still wearing a tie mark for me last year. Literally last year, we're tapping. I was literally tapping on his boot up the hill and um, we had such a sick time. And that was in top 16. This time it's way better to do it in yeah. the top four. And, you know, hopefully he can jump on the podium and get that third place and I'll give it a red-hot go for the win. I love that atmosphere in the pits. Everyone out here is just eager to get the battles down. It might be competitive on the track, but in the pits, everyone is just stoked to be out here and driving on Sydney Motorsport Park's North Circuit. Pros in the lead now with Dale Campaign chasing down. Both of these guys looking for a third place trophy. Yeah, great chase there. Dale all over the back of him. He's closing in tight, right up on his door. He's dropping back a little bit. Has he damaged something? I'm not sure. He seems to be dropping a long way back there. There's something not quite right with that GH haulage machine. Seems to be heading wide there. Not sure what's happening. Dale has been on song this entire round, chasing Proz on the entry here, both of them together. Not a lot of separation there. As they switch back, Dale tucks in nicely. Front wheel over the ripple strip there, heading wide. 
Both these cars look like they're together, but Dale just off the power there. Unsure what's happened to him, potentially a mechanical issue, but we're hearing now that he won't actually be coming back out. Oh no! Okay, Dale, what's happened? You, Michael Price is sitting up there and you're not there. Yeah, unfortunately, um, it come over, I took the um, inner clip on the, se the second inner clip and the front wheel went over the apex and uh, smashed the wheel and I think I broke the front wheel, so the tyre DB, no five minute rule unfortunately, so that's it for the night. So that means fourth place for you, is that yeah. correct? Still good, still happy with that. Uh, massive thanks to all my team crew uh, for getting me here, it's, yeah, it's been amazing, so yeah, un unfortunate, but this is how things go and drift. It's been great watching you, though. You've had fun the whole time. I'm sorry that it wasn't the ending that you hoped for. Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Well, thanks to Courtney down in the Valino hot pits, but it's all come down to this. The two drivers remaining, we've got Naoki Nakamura, we've got Luke Fink. 200 battles have been judged and won today here at the Garrett Advancing Motion International Drifting Cup. Dave, it's been a good one. And it's almost by design seeing two pink style cars out there, although I don't think Luke Fink's one is officially part of that Meehan Team Burst team. But look at this chase from Naoki Nakamura. Naoki Nakamura taking a little bit of cone there, but he is all over Fink's door. Luke Fink has thought he's had it all day, just cruising along with the arm out the window. Looks back over there, and we're going to see it here in the speed flow replay. He has a look over his door out the back window and goes, Oh my goodness, he's right there. I think Luke a little too confident here. He's dabbed the handbrake and gone, yep, okay, we're settled here for this corner. Bit of a wheel drop through the ripple strip of both drivers going through there. As he comes out though, Nakamura just on that power, on off. There comes the arm looking over the window. I'm going to redub this fat arm corner because everyone seems to be pulling it. <laughs> but man, what a tight battle. So as a, as a judge, Dan, we see a lot of drivers cutting narrow here. If both cars are dropping that inside wheel to, in the pursuit of that inside clip, is that all right? Look, it, it works on a, on a deduction basis. So if they both drop a wheel, then they're both going to get deducted for it. And it's really important, and we stressed it in driver's briefing, that even if the lead car is dropping a, a wheel, we want that chase car right up on their door and following their line. That one there, as you can see, Luke in the chase, dropping that little wheel there, that's going to be a deduction for him. Naoki staying right on the line that we asked for, pushing right out of that yellow line, coming back around. Now, Luke's going to have to close up, otherwise Naoki's going to get it. He's walking away from him. That on car just gave an idea of the speed that Naoki Nakamura has. Watching both of these cars fly through the judge section with a fair knot of pace underneath them, Nakamura's car just seemed to be slowly reeling out that gap yeah, you're right there, Dan. Luke going through the inside there, trying to tuck in as tightly as he could, knowing that he was at a disadvantage. But as a result, wiping off a bit of speed, and it's very, very hard to gain that back against any car on a wet surface, but not Naoki Nakamura in that 1100 horsepower S15 built specifically to come down here and show the Aussies who's boss. We have a look at one more time at this speed flow replay. You can see Luke Fink diving in there. That's what's brought him undone. And Naoki Nakamura takes the win. The top step of the podium is his. Luke Fink finishing second after a valiant attempt and big battles all weekend. Michael Prosnick rounds out the podium in third position. World Time Attack Challenge putting Australia on the map once again, bringing international motorsport down under. We've seen some of the best drifters in the country go head to head in the Garrett Advancing Motion International Drifting Cup, and we'll be back next year.